to talk to each other. We need to talk to God. And God needs to talk to us. That's right. A great deal of emphasis is put on we, the children of God, speaking to God. People always ask you, will you pray for me? Not only will they pray, but they'll ask you to pray for them. But we need to focus on the fact that it's the overall communication we also need to look at. Communication works in ways of prayer, counsel, teaching, preaching, and let's not forget the written word is God's communication to us. No matter how many social media accounts you have, no matter what cell phone carrier you have, no matter uh, what your internet speed is on your computer, no matter what kind of advanced network of communications that you have, the greatest communication system there is, is prayer. There's no staff. There's no, can you hear me now? <laughs> Y'all gonna walk with me today. The, the greatest form and the most beautiful to me now right. is God speaking to his children and his children listen. See, not, not just monologue, but dialogue. Right. In other words, did you hear what God told you? See, all the time it's not gonna be that still small voice. Sometimes it's gonna be that scripture that you read. Right. Or something that is confirmed in some other way, but it is a great form of communication. And it's not just for bedtime. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. As we move through our lesson, I'm hoping that we'll be able to see the God's blessing of sharing with his children our need to listen to God and our responsibility to listen to each other. Because sometimes we're so busy we don't have time to listen to each other. Turn your Bibles to Psalms 116, verse 1 and 2. So we'll have an anchor to what we're teaching about today. Psalms 116, verse 1 and verse 2. And what we'll be doing is talking about the concepts, the ideas, the application that comes from looking at this scripture. At least it's application to me anyway. Psalms 116, verse 1 and 2, when you have to say amen. amen. It says, I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. He heard you. Because he has inclined his ear unto me. Therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. Amen? Amen. Amen. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word about God stands forever. We're going to talk about God listens to his children. But before we get too far in the lesson, I want to establish something that the Lord just kept putting on me. He said, Brown, clear this up for me, would you please? All people are not the children of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The idea of everybody being the children of God came from the inclusive, erroneous doctrine. doctrine. It came from the New Age movement that mixed in the Christianity. The idea that everybody is the children of God. Mm -hmm. But guess what? Real simple. You can't call everybody that. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. If you don't remember all the theology of it and, and, and all the doctrinal support of it, just remember, you can't call everybody daddy. Mm -hmm. And don't nobody want nobody calling them daddy and that's not their child. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense to somebody? I know people are offended by the statement that says that all are not the children of God. But the truth of it is, is that everyone is not God's children in faith. All right. All right. Let me tell you the difference in there. See, fatherhood of God is not an opinion. It's not by popularity. But it is established by relationship. Many believe this mean spirit and judgmental to not include everybody to be the children of God. How are you going to say, I'm not a child of God? I didn't say that. Scripture said that. Mm. 
I know sometimes people are offended, but what I've come up with y'all, and this y'all ain't gonna find this in, in, in no books, I made this up. I call it Doctrines to Appease. Mm -hmm. All right. And, and I've looked over the years, all the doctrines been made up to pacify folks because they didn't want to hurt their feelings. Uh -huh. Oh, that may be a good title for but pacify doctrines. <laughs> doctrines to appease. You won't find it because I made it up. It's something the Lord put in my spirit, a.k.a. Bishop K.J. Brown, the pacify doctrine. One of the pacify doctrines is, is that you don't need to repent. God just, because God loves you so much, he just going to accept you anyhow. Hmm. Now worry about how you live. God loves you. Yes, God loves the sin. But we want to say we're in the family of God and go to God's house and act any kind of way. Wow. See, I, had, I heard one time what turned into an argument of two people going back and forth talking about everybody being a child of God. And the other person said, no, it's a requirement to be the child of God because you have to be in the family of God. They just went back and forth and back and forth. And me with myself, you know, I'm just sitting there listening. I didn't interject any kind of way. All I wanted to kind of jump in, but I just sat back and listened. And I thought about, what about a little spiritual paternity test? Mm. Well, what would a spiritual paternity test look like? First of all, I want to bring the fact, because the scripture, Genesis 1, 26 through 27, verse number 27 says we were created in, God created man in his own image. The image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. So we are God's children by creation. Amen. His created word. But if you want to really find a child of God, you got to take a blood test. Mm. <laughs> Somebody get there. You got to take a blood test. How you going to do that? First of all, you are not a child of God if regeneration has not taken place. It has to be a new birth. Scripture is real, real plain about this. John chapter 3, verse 3 through 7 in the Amplified. It says, Jesus answered him, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless a person is born again. Reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed and sanctified, he cannot ever see the experience of the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus, he said, how am I going to go a second time into my mother's womb? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, unless you're born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, that which is born of flesh is flesh. It is merely, mis fear merely physical, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Do not be surprised when I tell you, you must be born again. If you have not experienced regeneration, mm -hmm. born again, you're not a child of God. You know how in the paternity test it have to have so many, what is it, chromosome factors or whatever and all that's what to match up. I'm, I'm giving you more than one so you can see how many you got to match up. <laughs> First of all, residency. Does the Spirit of God reside in you? Does Christ live in you? Romans 8, 9 through 17, it tells you, and I'm paraphrasing for a minute, it says the Spirit of God has to be living in you. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not, I repeat, not a child of God. But I go to church. 
have you accepted the Savior? Don't y'all know it's, it's socially acceptable to go to church? Folk go to church for all kinds of reasons. Folk go to church for reasons that don't have nothing to do with discipleship. But guess what? It's good that there, maybe they keep coming and get something and learn something. Mm -hmm. But don't automatically think because a person come to the building that they went to the cross. Right. Can I say that again? Right. Don't automatically think because someone come to the building that they been to the cross. Look what it says in, in, that, in that chapter I was talking about, verse 13 and 14. It says, if you live according to the impulses of the flesh, you are going to die. But if you're living by the power of the Holy Spirit and putting that sin to death, you will live forever. For all who are, are, are led by the Spirit of God are the Son of God. Now, guess who testified to that? See, let me tell you, when, when a birth happens in the hospital, somebody got to sign this birth certificate to testify, to say, yeah, they were born on this day and they are this particular person's child according to the information that was given. Well, look at verse 16. It says, the Spirit himself testified and confirmed with our spirit that we are the children of God. Well, that's a witness to have, ain't it? Well, I ain't going to say you a child of God. The Spirit testified of it. Your Honor, can I bring up my first witness? <laughs> redemption. Redemption, all redemption means is to be set free. Galatians 4, 4 through 7. Have you been set free? We, 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 we always going to be dealing with temptation, but of the penalty of sin, the bondage of sin, has it left your life? Are you acting like the flesh or are you, act, are you walking in the spirit? Relationship. Galatians 3, 25 through 27. I want you to know that the Lord knows all his children. He don't have so many children he don't know them. You know, some people have so many children look like they forget their name sometimes. You know, God don't forget your name and he knows all his children. But now the fact the, not, but now that faith has come, we are no longer, no longer under control and the authority of the disciplinary. For we were born again, have been born from above, and we are the children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. We are the children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you who are baptized in Christ. We get that? We are the children of God through faith in Jesus. And this is something I added in here. Because I was thinking about mom. She said, don't you leave this house and don't act like you don't know, got no home training. <laughs> How about making sense to somebody? Don't leave. See, don't come to God's house every week. Y'all go home with me and leave this house and act like you ain't got no home training. Amen. Amen. I heard a preacher say one time, he, 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 he saw a young lady acting a certain way and stuff like this. He said, who church you go to? <laughs> yeah. and, and we got parents in here and God parents and why not? You, do you want your children that's going and just act a nut anywhere they go? <laughs> and see, some of us going to wait till we get home and some of us going to get straight right then. <laughs> get your son for a run. <laughs> and women good at what they can talk under their breath and a child The Lord knows who are his, or who are his, and let everyone who names the name of the Lord stand apart and withdraw from wickedness and wrongdoing. That's in 2 Timothy chapter 2, and this is in verse number 19. Also, the richness of his graces, because we're adopted heirs. The earth is the law of the fullness 
thereof the world that they dwell therein. We inherit that just because we're a child of God. You didn't know you was in the real estate business. Mm. You know you was in the oil business, didn't you? You didn't know you dealt with agriculture. Mm. You didn't know you dealt with cattle. But you said, Lord, I'm your child. Mm. I accept you as everything that belongs to him. Mm. That belongs to you. But watch this. We have stewardship and responsibility. So don't go try to take nobody's house and say it's yours because God gave it to you. It's a process for things. Yes. Let's review what I just talked about. The spiritual paternity text. Re regeneration, you must be born again. Resident, does Christ live in you? Redemption, have you been set free? Relationship, the Lord knows all his children. His riches in grace through Christ Jesus' blood. In other words, have you been to the cross? Not just been to the church, but have you been to the cross? Let me tell y'all, have y'all ever heard of somebody being in a family business? Your daddy did this and you did it and this goes on and on and on. Let me tell y'all something a lot of believers don't realize. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19, but I'm just going to paraphrase for a minute. It says that we are ambassadors for Christ and our ministry is reconciliation. Okay, what reconciliation is is that you're going to bring people back into the favor of God. Because sin was a separation between God and man. So if you are a believer, you automatically in the business of reconciliation. Witnesses, witnessing is for everyone. Preaching and teaching an apostle and the fivefold ministry and the office of bishop, that's one thing, but we also always have believers that should be witnessing to others in the faith and outside of the faith. I say this all the time, you weren't saved to sit down. You weren't saved to sit down. All of us got work to do. Let me show you something that God gave me in meditation time. You know how God's family, family grows through evangelism. That's how God's family grows. Because he has what? Another son. Right. Another daughter. Another son. Another daughter. And they say, welcome to the family. Yes. That's why in the traditional sense, we call each other brothers and sisters in Christ. Because we're in the family. But Matthew 9, 35 through 38. And Jesus went throughout all the city and villages teaching at their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing of disease and every affliction. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were, they were helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest and send our laborers into the field, into the harvest. But let me tell you, when you're in the family, we still talk about the children, right? When you're in the family, there's going to be some rewards and some challenges. Let me tell you one of the biggest things about being in the family of God. As scripture says, it's 21, Luke 21 and 17, you're going to be hated. He said, you're going to be hated for my name's sake. Anybody can pinpoint to a time in their life when, when per, a person lied and hated them, was jealous of them, and you know it was religious. You know it was religious. You know it was because of your belief. You know it was because of your stand. I can't stand you. Why? I don't know why. I can't stand you. Right, yes. Right, yes. So if, if, if you haven't got that at least one time, you probably ain't been bold enough. Because you don't get that because it says you will be hated on all men for my name's sake. Hello, guys. Welcome, 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 guys. This is Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries. My name is Priscilla Guillory Brown. Some people call me Priscilla. Some people call me Lady P. But this is Priscilla Guillory Brown coming to you with Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries. And we have some wonderful, 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 exciting news that's going on in the ministry, guys. This, that we are in need of your help. 
We need partners in order to help us get the word out about Jesus so that we can share the love of Jesus Christ. We want everyone to be saved and for, for the whole body of Christ to know of Jesus. So guys, we need your help. We need partnerships. We need partnerships at, at, at the minimum level of $10, $20, $30, $40, $40 and $50 or more of monthly partners in order for us to continue with the word of God. Guess what, guys? You know, like they say on TV, and wait, and wait. We got a special bonus coming to you guys. For everybody, everyone that donates at least $20 or more, you know you're going to get something for free? You're going to get Bishop K.J. Brown a book that he just wrote out called are you ready? And there's a word here that says Harpanza. Look it up. It's in the book. I'm not going to tell you what it means, but look it up. But anyway, Bishop has wrote this wonderful book about the rapture. And guys, we need you all to, to, to donate. Every first 100 people that donate at least $20 or more will receive this free book, guys. And guess what else we got going on? Bishop K.J. Brown has built his very own radio station. We are so excited and so happy for this radio station, guys. It's going to bless you. I mean, it is phenomenal. It is, how they say, bananas. You're going to go bananas over this station, guys. Bishop Brown will be preaching at every three hours. Is it three hours? It's three, six, nine, and 12 a.m. and p.m. Around well, the Well, I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries is a, a family of ministries. Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries is Zion Tabernacle Church. Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries is Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries itself. But we also, the way that we do ministry is digital in addition to some one-on-one. -on -one. But we have a radio station, and that was something God just dropped in my lap and told me to do. I, I didn't have any experience on how to build a radio station or how to get everything together. But God told me to put the gospel in their hands put the praise in their hands. And I didn't understand, God gave it to me in a dream. And then, I, I, I one day, <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about it, and I had my phone in my hand, and it came to me, that's what God was talking about. And so, the radio station has it where you can send a prayer request, it, it gives you the link to send in a prayer request, it talks about uh, how you can uh, listen to the messages, I'll let you know that it's at 3, 6, 9, and 12 a.m. and p.m. And then also, uh, it talks about uh, it just talks about Jesus several times a day. And, and, and the thing about it is I wanted some praise, I wanted preaching, and I wanted prayer all in one spot. And God gave all of this for me to do, but we need your help to continue it. Yes. Uh, the radio station, uh, the programming I'm doing, uh, picking out the songs, my wife is helping with that, uh, I'm doing too. Uh, God just putting a lot of hats on for me in terms of what I'm doing, and I'm enjoying the journey. But I need your help. We need your help. Because what we are, and we are a ministry that believes in building, winning lives for a coming Lord. We're not a prosperity theology ministry and all those kind of things. We don't have any kind of gimmicks or anything like that. We just straight up word. I preach like that. My wife preaches like that. Storyteller Pastor Simmons preaches like that. We are a word church. We're a word ministry. So I want you to know that we have the radio station. We have the building fund that we're doing because we're going to build a ministry facility. I don't really like talking about me, but I love talking about Jesus. And I have a passion for this. I have a love for this. Uh, the television is for you. The radio is for you. The app is for your convenience. We send in Bibles to Africa. We've been sending Bibles to Kenya for quite some time. Uh, uh, we're going to want to try to continue to do that. I lost uh, contact with the, uh, the young man, the pastor, uh, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, we're going to try to do uh, Kenya again or either Uganda, but we, we continued in our commitment to send Bibles to Africa. The reason why we stopped is that I didn't want to send Bibles and I didn't know it was getting where it was supposed to go. I didn't want, Because I want to be, and we are good stewards over that that you give. My mother, Mother Brown, some of you know her, she always say, bless it and stretch it. And so what I do is I, I believe in what she prayed to bless it and stretch it, but also everyone that gives, it could be a dollar a month, a twenty dollars a month, or whatever it is. Anyone that gives the Bishop K.J. Brown Ministry, Zion Tabernacle Church, 
I pray over that gift. I do it personally. I do it personally. I pray over that gift. We, we, we do the uh, offering uh, on, on, on Sundays. I, I pray the prayer, but I also take those names. I look at that list as it comes, and I pray for those individuals that God will increase them that God will increase what goes into their household because everybody wants to move in. Everybody wants to have more. But what we want to do is think about kingdom. So I want you to give not so much as a percentage gift, but a priority gift because I want you to give to kingdom because God is, hey, he's the Bishop K.J. Brown Ministries presents Are You Ready? An informative written work that breaks down the questions you have always had about the rapture. This informative work is designed to lay out a simple to understand argument using biblical support to get you ready for the rapture. Purchase your copy today by visiting www.bishopkjbrown.org. Click on bookstore link. Now, the question is, are you ready?